Praise be to the PSVR Lord in the sky up in heaven because it is petrifying pumpkins here and I am back with some huge new firewall zero hour information. We've got new gameplay, new screenshots, we've got map details, we got new hands-on impressions and we've got places to be. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so we got three new hands-on preview articles here and one new gameplay video which I will have playing in the background there for you guys to enjoy while I talk about the previews and there's a bunch of new screenshots too. So let's start with the uploadviewer.com preview. So the author here starts off by saying that he's played on the uh, shipyard or container type map which sounds a lot like the new map we talked about in one of my previous videos and he goes on to say that the sense of presence you get in this game is amazing when you're playing with real people and that the things he did in the game can only be done in VR like physically moving in real life, quickly turning to and unload six shots from his sidearm into some guy. Next he tells us that the game only has one single mode where you have a team of attackers and a team of defenders and the attackers are trying to gain access to the laptop. So don't expect modes like team deathmatch and capture the flag, at least not at launch. And of course the reason for this is to not fracture the player base. PSVR doesn't have a huge pool of players so if half of us are playing different modes it can make matchmaking a bit difficult in theory. So I can see where they're coming from and if the players are there I've no doubt they'll add more modes. But anyway back to the preview. Interestingly the author confirms there is zero narrative content so then what the hell is the mild impact sex Australian rating thing about from one of the previous videos. Maybe it's teabagging. I don't know. Anyway, he goes on to talk about character progression and character perks. He gave an example of a perk being taking less damage from explosives and he says that you can level up the character to unlock an additional perk which sounds very interesting. I'm assuming these perks are the unique character abilities we've been talking about in previous videos rather than just equipable perks that you might see in something like a Call of Duty game for example. Which means these abilities are locked to specific characters. At least I think that's what this is, I could be wrong. He then says that combining loadouts to match character perks will be important which is also interesting because it sounds like if you want to be a shotgun player for example you probably be wanting to pick the specific operator who has maybe some kind of shotgun buff perk to maximize your effectiveness. So that's just some food for thought right there. So then he tells us his one criticism about the game and it's not really a criticism aimed at the game so much as it is aimed at the PS viewer in general. He missed not being able to do room scale viewer like he can in his fancy pantsy PC VR game. But us PS viewer peasants are used to limited movement, so I for one don't see this as a valid criticism of the game. He even goes on to say, and I'll quote, although if I had to pick between playing room scale with touch or vive ones and playing standing still with the PS aim, I think I'd pick the aim. It feels so good in your hand and does a remarkable job of making it feel like you're actually holding a rifle, just like your character in the game. I don't know if he's English, but he is now. He really goes on to praise the aim controller in this game. He reveals that we control the laser size attachment by using the D-pad on the aim controller, which I'd say it's probably safe to say the flashlight would be the same thing. And he says the tracking held up surprisingly well in his opinion. It sounds like the devs over at First Contact Entertainment have done a fantastic job of implementing the aim controller in this game and god knows I've been itching to turn that thing on for a game like this for a while now. The aim isn't the only way to play as we already know. You can use the boring old DualShock 4 if you're a boring old type of person who doesn't like fun. Just joking, play however you want, I don't mind. Oh and he also confirms that the moves are not supported for this game, just aim and DualShock 4. Then near the end of his preview he shifts on Bravo Team by saying that the game is what Bravo Team should have been before going on to say that this game could help put VR on the map. Not just PS VR, but VR in general. So the praise doesn't get much higher than that. Okay, so let's move on to the next preview and this one comes from website variety.com. By the way, I leave links to all these articles in the description below if you want to check them out yourself. So this author compares Firewall to not just Rainbow Six, but also SOCOM. And that alone was enough to get some people to start eyeing up the handle motion and the box of Kleenex tissues. He goes on to say that even when playing with full locomotion he felt zero motion sickness, which is great to hear. Not for me because my stomach was chiseled from stone by Michelangelo himself, but for you genetically inferior folk out there, you know I'm very happy for you. He then gives us a quote from Adam Orth where he explains why they decided to make Firewall in the first place. And he says, there just wasn't a good tactical multiplayer shooter on PSVR, so we decided to go for that. So yeah, Adam Orth throwing massive 
shade at the Honor and Juicy developer with that quote. I can't wait to see the resulting feud on Twitter. Anyway, we get more info on the DS4 control scheme. Apparently it will also rely on motion controls, which I believe is what Fairpoint did as well. But I never actually tried that because I have an aim controller and I'm not insane. But yeah. That's an interesting choice. I expected standard controls on the DS4 like a Call of Duty or Battlefield or something like that. So this author really emphasizes the teamwork aspect of his session. He says that when they won, they only won because they were all communicating. But he expresses concern that when it's out in the wild, people out there won't communicate and that can negatively impact the experience. That's a very valid concern on his part and I don't think there is an awful lot that the devs can do about that. My advice to everyone is to join a firewall community, get a squad going, communicate with your mics and you should have a good time. Of course I'll be looking for teammates too and god knows I can talk shit down a microphone. Orth also confirmed to this author that Firewall is nearing completion, which we kind of knew already so even though we still don't have a release date, we can be confident that it's around the corner. Also he confirmed that there will be 9 maps at launch from 3 locations. Now I'm not sure what that means exactly like nine maps from three different countries or something like that. It's kind of unusual phrasing there, but the important part is the nine map bit. I think that's a fairly healthy number as long as they're all diverse enough and nicely detailed. Next we hear about customization. We already know a lot about loadouts and contractors, but here we found out about cosmetic customization. And yes, there will be microtransactions, but they will be limited to cosmetics, so don't worry about any pay to win shenanigans. Fingers crossed for a pumpkin head cosmetic, I think we'd all buy that. Next, Orth confirms that it's one mode only to avoid breaking up the player base, but Orth then confirmed that the team have plans to support the game with post-release DLC. So let's check out the last preview here from VentureBeat.com. This author talks about a lot of the same stuff that we've got from the first two authors, but she does describe the map she played in as being in an industrial setting with server rooms, which we'll talk more about when we get to the new screenshots. She says that map was great for cat and mouse confrontations. She goes on to also compliment the aim controller, it was her first time using it and she didn't expect it to like it as much as she did, though she did mention that she misses having two motion controllers simply for reloading guns, which I can understand because reloading the sniper rifle in killing floor incursion is really cool once you got the rhythm down but in firewall it's gonna be a simple button press hardly a deal breaker of course maybe in firewall 2 on psvr2 we'll have better motion controllers to work with so we can reload manually but i'm getting about five years ahead of myself there anyway that was all she had to say really about her hands-on impressions so let's tackle these new screenshots so the first thing to note here is that every screenshot has a disclaimer on the bottom saying that they were captured on a pc and reformatted for a normal 2d display now some people are worried that this means they're doing a bit of false advertising here, but I'm pretty sure the only reason they take these screenshots on PC is because the version that we'll be playing just doesn't have the tools that their dev kits have. It'd be like a photo mode type thing for example. That's my take on this anyway. I'm not worried about the visuals because we can see them playing on PS4s in the off-screen gameplay and that looks good to me. But before we get to that, the screenshots. So this first one, we, we've got two guys taking cover behind a doorway while another two guys search them out. There's a few interesting things to take away from this. One is the map. I get the feeling it's in a large tanker boat, or if not that, then a bunker, or something along those lines. If we zoom in here on this sign on the wall, we can see two letters that look like they're in Cyrillic script. That suggests that we're in Russia here, or at least on a Russian ship. So I looked up that script on Google Translate, and I got slug, with other possible translations including silt, mud, slime, and clay. So maybe it's a Russian ship filled with some radioactive sludge on board or some crap like that. Anyway, this shot really shows off some nice looking reflections on the wet surfaces and just lighting in general. Those laser sights look pretty cool, but you can also see how they might give away your position. Next, let's take a look at the guy on the right here. Notice how his camouflaged top doesn't match his camouflaged trousers. This would appear to be character customization from what I can tell. Also, we see the guy furthest away has a nice bushy beard so I'm guessing that might be the Australian operator called Skip. Moving on. Okay, so we have a pretty cool nighttime shootout here in a city alleyway. If we look
look at the car over here and take a look at this license plate we can get a clue of what country this map might be located after doing a bit of wikipedia in i think the language on this license plate is greek written in lower case but don't hold me to that these two images have made me do more language research in half an hour than i've done in years anyway we may be looking at a city like athens if that place is indeed greek we got five characters on the screen here the most interesting of which is the guy beside the car take note of the fact that he is pointing we'll come back to that later on he is also crouching down on one leg which i think is interesting because it makes me wonder is there a crouch button or does the character model automatically crouch down like that if we do that in real life player here appears to be using a desert eagle handgun but i'm not a weapon nut so i'm not going to guarantee that either let me know in the comments below if that is indeed a desert eagle next we have that server room that the third author talked about and we get a good look at one of the many laptops we'll be hacking into when the game launches there isn't really much else to say about this image other than the lighting looks quite nice i don't know what kind of gun that is so if you think you know let me know in the comments below like last time so this image looks like it's the same map that i think might be a greek city going by the brickwork and the shutter over the door there in the foreground we can see contractor who appears to be an african military dude judging just by his look he's got the red beret and if you can look at his forearm there you'll see what looks like a colorful green and red beaded bracelet type thing that just gives me african vibes behind him we see skip again this time he appears to be performing some kind of gesture similar to the other guy who was pointing in the previous picture this makes me wonder if there's some kind of gesture or emote system in place or if he's being ai controlled and that's just something that the ai can do a third possibility is that he's looking at his wrist mounted map screen thingamajig we'll have to wait and see so in this next shot we see the lads advancing through the alleyway the same three lads as in the last shot plus one more new guy it's the same map as before the one thing that sticks out to me here is that if you look at the wrist mounted displays you can see they're all displaying the number two what does that mean it could be a countdown timer or perhaps it's how many enemies are left alive let me know below what you think that number two could be about so this next image takes place on the container map in fact these four guys are about to enter a container isn't an awful lot to say about this screen either that i can see other than some nice lighting so i'll move on so this next shot here i think is also on the shipping container and shows us an interesting scene we have four players in view one guy is hiding from at least two other players the guy furthest away may actually be sneaking up on those other two guys and they may be about to ambush them it's kind of hard to tell but once again we have that number two on their wrist displays what's interesting this time is that both the guy hiding and the guys walking have the number two displayed on the screen this is why i think the guy in the background may be his teammate of the guy hiding and then it may display how many enemies are left that way they'd all have the number two that's just a guess of course that number could mean anything it might just be a texture like a default texture that's on it the whole time funnily enough when i zoom into the guy in the background to check his wrist half the screen is blacked out so i can't read it so it looks like a graphical glitch of some kind or maybe draw distance thing so here we have the three lads chilling out on the container shipyard map angled upwards to really show off the nice fog or mist effect and there's that goddamn number two again so this is the last image i have to look at here it's a cool one too i think as we get a look at a new map this one appears to be a kill house which i think is a slang term for those training compounds that like the likes of fbi use that kind of thing if you ever played call of duty 4 the first mission where you go through the training scenario in the warehouse this looks like that kind of thing it's fairly sprawling too you can see corridors and rooms going off to the rear of the warehouse it really looks like a maze from above then there's this catwalk area here where the two lads are standing that looks like it'll give you quite the vantage point although it also looks like it'd make you very exposed and i think that does it for the screenshots and the new info i was going to go through the new gameplay video too but i think i've bitten off more than i can chew and i'll try to get an analysis of the video up asap okay that's a lot of shit talk lads i've put a fair bit of work into this one so if you'd help me out with a like and a share that would be a big help plus consider subscribing if you want more firewall content and psvr content in general including news updates and live streams that's it for me i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching